Hi folks, how's it going? Hope we're all keeping well. Um, today we're moving on to a brand new topic that we would have been moving on to had we been in school. We're looking at geoecology and we're looking at the desert biome. Okay, so this is the final question that comes up on the Leave Insert higher level paper. It's an 80 mark question and generally uh, you're asked to talk about a biome. We're going to go into what a biome is in a few minutes um, and talk about the characteristics of the biome talk about how things like plants and animals have adapted to the conditions in the biome and also talk about things like the climate of the biome and the soils of the biome. So today we're going to look in a bit of detail at the desert biome and we're going to look at the soils in the desert biome and also at the climate in the desert biome. Okay, but before we go into that, there's a number of key words that are going to crop pop up in today's lesson that we may not have heard of before and it's very important that we understand what these are before we go into anything okay so first of all a biome you might be thinking what on earth is a biome well a biome is a community of plants and animals that have common characteristics for the environment they live in okay so for example we're talking about a desert biome okay and in that desert biome is a community of plants and animals and these plants and animals have basically adapted to live in a desert the desert is very very hot um, very harsh, hostile area to try and live in and plants and animals in the desert have common characteristics so examples of these characteristics would include like plants would have really long roots to try and get the water table deep underground animals would be able to carry and store moisture and absorb moisture from different things okay but we're going to look at that in the next lesson okay so biome a community of plants and animals that have common characteristics for the environment that they exist in okay a desert. Now, you probably all heard of a desert before. You probably have a fair idea of what the word desert is or what a desert means. So, desert, a barren area of landscape where little precipitation, precipitation means rain, little rain occurs and consequently living conditions are hostile for plant and animal life. So, I think if I asked you to give me a definition of what a desert is, you'd probably be able to come out with something kind of like that. Okay, so a barren area of landscape, okay, where there's very, very little rainfall, okay and a desert deserts are often people you'd often characterize a desert as hot deserts are hot okay during the day they're very hot but they can also be extremely cold at night time okay so it's kind of like one extreme to the other so it's either very very hot or very very cold and there's very very little rainfall as a result living conditions are hostile for plant and animal life okay um so very very few plants and animals can survive here those that do live here have special have adapted to live in the climate okay another word here arid the word arid if i said to you what does the word arid mean okay an arid is an area with little or no rain that is too dry and barren to support much vegetation okay so for example we're going to come up later on in this lesson there'll be a, a word called uh, aridosols okay that just means arid soil so that's a soil in an area that has little or no rain and is too dry and barren to support much vegetation final one here that i wanted to uh, bring to your attention is salinization salinization and salinization is something that often occurs in deserts and this is when salt builds up in soil okay and when salt builds up in soil it's not really a good thing so if salt builds up too much it can become too toxic it's a bit like if you put too much salt on your dinner it becomes too toxic to eat okay it's not nice all right that's the same thing that happens here so if there's too much salt in soil it eventually will reach toxic levels that are too toxic for plants okay so a biome so what is a biome again we've already kind of looked at this a biome is a community of animals and plants treated as a unit with its physical environment okay so the plants and animals that live in this area the desert biome are um, they're treated as a unit okay they all have lots of special characteristics that allow them to survive in this area okay um, and um, when we say uh, we're we talk about things like soil and climate types present okay so because of the harsh physical environment uh, the soil and climate type mean it's difficult for things plants and animals to survive here so these plants and animals must adapt to survive okay they must change and adapt to their harsh conditions okay the biome that i have studied and the biome that we are going to study is the desert biome okay um, the general climatic and soil characteristics have been adapted to by plants and animals alike so they can survive here so we that's that's 
that's basically what we're talking we're going to talk about in the next few lessons okay so because the, the desert we know a desert hard place to live extremely dry extremely hot in the day extremely cold at night very there might there might might be any rain at all or if there is a bit of rain it might be maybe between zero and 100 millimeters of rainfall per year so because of this plants and animals have had to adapt okay they've had to adapt to survive here and that's known as the biome okay that community of plants and animals that live in the desert that have adapted to this area okay some examples of deserts okay in the world okay we the sahara desert here which dominates a lot of north africa okay the arabian desert which is in the middle east we've got the australia here the australian outback we've got the gobi desert up in asia that's just up near the himalayan mountains the Turkestan desert in Central Asia, that's just below, just below kind of Russia here. We've got, and the Cal California as well. Okay, the, so we've up in, uh, this, no, sorry, in, in Mexico as well. And then we've got deserts down in South Africa. And uh, or you can see a selection of other deserts there. Okay, and you'll see that deserts, where are they located? They're usually located between 15 and 30 degrees uh, north and south of the equator okay so you can find here okay you can see so imagine this is the equator about around about here okay the deserts are about 15 to 15 to 30 degrees north and south of the equator okay so what are the climatic characteristics of the desert biome okay so what about what is the climate like in the desert well deserts have extremely clear skies and little rainfall so if you're standing in a desert and you look up You'll just see blue skies, okay? Now, this is a new word. Probably could have included this at the start. The, uh, the gerinal range is very high. And what does that mean, gerinal range? Gerinal range is the range between the coldest point and the warmest point of the day, okay? So the range is very high in a desert. So, for example, um, in a desert, temperatures can be up to 50 degrees Celsius, maybe you know a kind of peak maybe middle of the day one to two o'clock and at night time they can be down to about zero degrees so there's about a, a 40 to 50 degree gerinal temperature range in the desert which is unbelievably high like you think in ireland like during the summer in ireland it could be maybe eight nine degrees during the at night time whereas at daytime it could be 18 degrees there might be an eight or ten degree gerinal temperature range in ireland whereas generally deserts have a 40 to 50 degree gerinal range okay now a lot of rains also a lot of sorry deserts also do not receive they, they we know deserts do not receive much rainfall okay and there's a lot of reasons for this so the main reason okay can be attributed to the rain shadow effect okay so a lot of deserts are located beside mountains okay for example the gobi desert um in the himalayas and what happens here is when warm air comes in okay off a sea the warm air must rise over the mountains in this case the himalayan mountains and what it does is it'll rain then it'll rain up near around that mountain range okay but on the other side of the mountain you've got your rain shadow okay and this is because the, the warm air has lost all its moisture so as the air moves back down okay it is no more moisture so as a result in an area with a rain shadow it'll never rain okay so as a result of that you've got um for example the gobi desert in the himalayas okay other area other reasons for um deserts okay forming is if you look here a lot of these deserts here okay they can be they're kind of they can be inland okay so like look smack man in the middle of australia up here in the middle of africa okay uh turkestan and gobi all right they're they're far away from a lot of time these deserts are quite far away from oceans okay so for example if you look at ireland the west of ireland gets lots of rain why is that the case because warm air moves over the atlantic ocean and when it comes into contact with the west of ireland it rises above the mountains in the west of ireland and rains okay whereas for example in uh, say turkestan here okay there is no seas nearby same here in, in in a large part of the sahara desert in africa okay if you come away from the coast towards the middle okay you're far away from the effect of the sea okay so your the, the air moves across the sea collects moisture and it might rain a bit on the coastline but when you come in here the the, the air has lost all its moisture through rainfall so as a result 
um, there's never any rain. Okay, and the same down in Australia here. So if warm air does come off the, co the coast here, okay, it might rain along the coast, but as this air travels inland to Australia, it loses, it's lost all its moisture, so it never rains. Okay, that's another reason for um, that's another reason for the serious lack of rainfall in our deserts. Okay, so folks, what I want you to do now, okay, is I want you to pause the video. There are five revision questions I want you to do, and when you're ready, press play, and we'll continue on with the second half of the video. Okay, so I'm going to move on to desert soil. So, um. Soils are generally in the desert are generally known as aridosols. That's the word we came across at the very start. Okay, let's remind ourselves what is the word? Well, we came across the word arid. Okay, what does the word arid mean? An area with little or no rain, too dry and barren to support much vegetation. Okay, so what they've done, they've added, they've basically added soils or salts to the end of that to make aridosols. Okay, so uh, soils in an area with little or no rain that are too dry and barren to support vegetation. Okay, so the soils are generally known as aridosols. They are fine, sandy in texture to gravelly and coarse. So if you picked up desert soil, okay, if you scooped up some desert soil in your hand, first of all, it would be unbelievably hot, okay? But it would also range from literally sand, so fine grains of sand to more kind of gravelly, coarse uh, in texture, so little bits of rock and stuff, okay? Desert soils have very little subsurface horizon development. Okay, so subsurface means, okay, what does subsurface, if I say sub-Saharan or sub-sea, that means it's under the, under, sub means under, okay, a submarine is called a submarine because it is uh, underwater, okay, so subsurface, so the layer of soil just below the surface has very little development, and this is a very important layer of soil, okay, because this is, this layer of soil has lots of nutrients in it, okay, and there is very little development in this subsurface horizon in the deserts. Okay, now in a desert, in low lying areas of the deserts, they have deep soils. Okay, and this is from millennia of weathering in the highlands where soil is washed down by the rain. So, mountains, for example, the Himalayan mountains would get broken down by weathering and erosion, and those little sediments get transported down to the desert by rain and, and, and flash floods. And as a result, there are very deep soils here. Okay, so very deep sandy, very deep sandy soils. Like if you went, if you went into a low-lying area in the desert with a shovel and uh, with a spade, and you start digging, you would be digging for a long time, dig, digging through basically pure sand for a long, long time. Okay, um, now soils are poorly developed due to lack of rain. Okay, so as we know, deserts receive between zero and hundred millimeters of rainfall per year. Okay, rain is vital for soil health, okay? And unfortunately, the desert soils just do not, simply do not get this rain, okay? So, desert soils, they have a high mineral content, but low organic content. So, uh, what does low organic content mean? Well, well, for example, in Ireland, okay, when a tree loses its leaves, those leaves fall on the ground and they break down and decompose into plant litter. And that plant litter is vital for soil health, okay? Now, in a desert, if we go up to our picture of our desert here, okay, we can see there are very, very few plants. We can see a few plants here, but not very many, okay? And when those plants do die, it leaves a t very, very little organic content, okay? So as a result, um, the soils are gray in color and are not healthy, okay? So soils, they are they have very low water content. They can be very fine grains of sand or rock. They can be very, in lowland areas, they're very deep. They have a high mineral content, but a very low organic content because the lack of vegetation. There is very, very, very few trees, plants in the desert. So as a result, there is a lack of dead plants and animals, um, or sorry, dead plants providing organic content. Okay. Um, the soils are easily eroded. Okay, so soils and desert get very broken down because they're, they're so weak. Okay, think about sand, like sand, sand can easily be moved. You could easily, you could easily dig up sand, okay? You, you know, of course, if you go into your back garden, it would be difficult. It'd be harder to dig up the soil there, okay? So the soils in the desert are easily eroded and this allows for evaporation to occur as they do not hold much water, okay? They tend to be quite alkaline and have a hard plan, hard pan due to calcification, okay? Now a hard pan, what's a hard pan? Okay, a hard pan is 
I look at a diagram here, we've got a white zone here. Okay, this is this is um due to calcification. This is an area of mineral deposits known as callus or callish. Okay, so calcification when mineral deposits to form just under the top of the soil and they form a hard pan. And a hard pan is what's is impermeable. So it's relatively impermeable. What does impermeable mean? Impermeable means uh, water cannot pass through it. Okay, and that's very, very, very bad. Okay, because what happens then is in the off chance that it does rain, okay, it means water cannot get down to, the, to these layers here where it's needed. And as a result, the soil, the top, the very top layer of soil can become waterlogged and it can cause plants to die. Okay, so it's either unbelievably dry and arid here or if the off chance it does rain it can rain and because the water cannot get by this impermeable hard pan okay that means that the soil becomes waterlogged okay and that's not good either okay something called salinization occurs so we know that min minerals can deposit so minerals just get deposited in the top layer of soil okay they do not because again because of this impermeable um, layer okay the minerals do not soak down to the bottom of the soil where they are also needed they stay up here at the top and a buildup of minerals is bad we know if you put too much salt on your dinner it's bad it'll make it taste bad okay the same thing happens here a buildup of too, too many minerals and salt in particular uh, causes salinization to occur okay salinization again what is salinization well we go back up here to the top here salinization the buildup of salts in soil eventually this can cause soil uh, salt to reach toxic levels levels that are too toxic for plants okay so what i want you to do now folks is pause the video okay and again we've got five questions here i've also sent you this powerpoint as well so i want you to answer these five questions for me now please and also make sure to send me on your answers for correction. Okay, thanks for tuning in folks and we'll see you again tomorrow.